Hi folks, welcome back. Today I want to take a look at a paper by Butler Lampson. This paper was published back in 1973 and this paper is famous because it was the first to introduce the concept of a covert channel. A covert channel is a way for a program to leak information that it is not supposed to via channels that are not even supposed to be communication channels. But I'm jumping ahead. Let's go back to the beginning of the paper. The problem that this paper is trying to deal with is that of confining the execution of a program. And what the author means here by confinement is that this program should not be able to leak any information that it is operating on to any other program in the system except for the program that called it. This is a pretty fundamental information security goal to have. The problem is that there are many, many subtle ways in which a program could leak information. Recently, we've seen a spate of such covert channel or side channel attacks. Things like Rowhammer, which was able to change bits in memory, or Meltdown, or Spectre. These are attacks which were able to read memory that they were not privileged to read by using side channels such as the details of brand speculation or the details of cache misses in modern CPU architectures. This is a very devious attack because if a malicious program uses a covert channel to leak your data, there is usually no good way to detect that it is doing so. And in this paper, the author is trying to grapple with this problem. And the problem of preventing a program from leaking data in such a way is called the confinement problem. So the goal is to be able to confine any arbitrary program. Note that this is not the same as saying that any malicious program will still be able to run when confined. Obviously not. We want to trap it or stop its execution if we detect that it is breaking confinement. We simply want to ensure the property that data is not leaked. There are some very obvious ways in which a malicious program could try to leak your data. It may just try to hold the secret data in memory and return it to its owner. It may leak data by writing it to a file somewhere. It may leak data by sending a message to another process. These are all pretty obvious ways in which it could leak data. But then there are also some very non-obvious ways in which a malicious program could leak data. For example, even if we said that a program cannot read and write files at the same time, even if the program can only ever read files and these files may be written by its malicious owner, it could still leak data by using this devious scheme where just attempting to open a file and checking if it gets an error while doing that can be turned into a mechanism for transmitting bits to the owner. Another very sneaky covert channel is when a malicious program controls the rate of its I.O. or the rate at which it is using CPU. And this has an impact on the overall load of the system. And then an external malicious observer can look at the overall load of the system and infer data that this program is trying to leak. So that should give you some idea of how creative one can get with covert or side channel attacks. How can we stop this? One very obvious way is for the confined program not to be allowed to make any calls to external systems. Obviously, a program like this would not be able to do much, so this is not a very practical solution. You could go one step further and say, all right, the program being confined can make calls to other programs, but those programs themselves must also be confined. 
there still runs into the problem that the supervisor or the operating system itself cannot really be confined and so you have to trust it. And the conclusion of the author here is that it is very hard to enumerate all the covert channels via which a program could leak data. In a complex system with a lot of functionality, there is no known rigorous way of enumerating or finding out all the channels which could be used to leak data in a covert way. If you want to block all covert channels, the only technique left is to do what the author is calling masking. The caller of a program must be able to determine all the input that is going into both legitimate and covert channels. Now this is a really broad principle and to enforce this requires some very invasive techniques. You might have to do things like slow the program down or generate spurious I.O. These are all techniques to confuse observers of a covert channel. So that was a look at Butler Lamson's paper from 1973, which introduced the concept of information leakage via covert channels and then analyzed the difficulty of eliminating covert channels. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.